how are you all doing? Right, so we've got worn out forks and we've got some new bits. So let's get started. And yes, it still is January. No, it's not, it's February. <laughs> Okay then, what's in the sweet tin? Well, we have some nice new oil seals. Extreme. Uh, yeah, that's a rocker cover for the uh, Sephira. They're the fork dust seals to stop any dust getting into the oil seals. They're the fixing C-clips, but I'm not sure if they're for this bike. I bought those, but I didn't have to buy those because they came with the bike. I found them in the ports, luckily enough, with those ones as well. But the writing's disappeared, so I'm not sure what they're for. And I'm not sure if they belong with them. Uh, and we've got these headstock bearings for the CBR and our dust seals again so we just need that and that and they can go back into the sweetie pocket right so where I'm going to start uh, on the other fork I did start with taking the top cap off as you probably saw the video but with this one we're going to do the allen bolt so there's a little allen bolt what lives inside there which holds the uh, damper the damper rod thing inside there damper rod thing yeah I'm sure you know what I mean uh, and if you've ever tried this before they can be very difficult better not lose that, I don't know, that keeps coming out of there they can be very difficult to undo because they just spin round inside so you have to take the top cap off anyway and uh, in this case with the uh, CBR I think you have to get a broomstick and knock them down into the uh, dampening rod let me uh, just show you the damp let me just show you the other damping rod so you'll know what I mean okay so that's the damping rod that lives in there like that and that's where the little bolt screws into and luckily this one came out nice and easy but normally there's like a hexagon hole you know so you can fit some sort of spanner or tool down there but this has just got a round hole so you just have to get an old broomstick get your Stanley knife make that into a little bit of a point so you can bash it into there with the hammer and then when that's bashed into there from the other end of this tube you can get some grips on it or wall grips and then try to undo the bolt that comes out of there. I'm sure you all knew that anyway. Bollocks. Bolly bolly bollocks. Trying to repair them, not break them. Bloody things. Right. So in my case, I want this old Allen key what has snapped. I've just moved the end off a bit where it was snapped and that fits in there perfectly but then I found this little socket which fits on there perfectly and then I was thinking I'll get my uh, impact gun on that and hopefully it will come out nice and easy but my impact gun is the half inch and this is the quarter inch so then I found this in my torque wrench set 
which I got from the car boot for seven pound. And that fits in there perfect. So hopefully this is going to be nice and easy and corned on in front of our eyes. <laughs> See what happens. Five, four, three, two. Nothing. It's spinning round inside there. As you know on the Allen keys these are little nipple bits what are supposed to help you move about with your Allen key just destroy all the bolts you put them in so we better be careful with that I think maybe I should whip that bit off so be with me while I do that right then nipple gone Try that again. Just hope it's not too late. And uh, I think we've got it. So a little magnet fit in there. Yes, it does. Oh yes. Come here. Come on. Can't get it back out there. Here we go. Perfect. We didn't have to mess about with the boom angle, but we probably will do when we put them back together. So. That's one milestone past, and that's one fork leg pissing. Right, keep it that way up. Well, where's my other joke? Yes, yeah, so be careful when you take that bolt out because your oil will start pouring out. Sounds like me when I have a poo. Right then, bear with me while I clean this little mess up and I'll be back. Okay then, I've been interrupted. Had to stop for an emergency. <laughs> I was uh, in here thinking, why does it keep getting so smoky? Then when I come to reload the fire, I realised my shed was on fire. So, if rain stop play, I'm going to have to take all this to bits and to work something else out to stop my shed catching on fire. <sighs> yes, that was a bit of a shock. I've been running around with the watering can. I still don't trust it, so I'm going to wait till that goes out and then I'm going to take all the white shielding off and check it. And uh, hopefully, I don't need the fire extinguisher. That's a huge bit. Oh my god. <laughs> what a dickhead. Okay, then, so this is a few days later as we were rudely interrupted by fire. Uh, all I've done is took all the wood away and uh, put metal away, which I should have done in the first place. But then again, I didn't realize that this would be getting so hot. So let's get back to where we finished. So now we've got that bolt out, now we're going to take the top cap off. So let's do that and hope we don't have to call the fire brigade. 
Okay then, so we've got the uh, stanchion loosely in the vice with a good piece of rag around it. Uh, the socket is 24 millimeter. Don't know if you can see that. Just whack it on there, and uh, that's it. We've got you. If you didn't watch the other video, normally these are very fine threads and they take ages to undo. But uh, on the CVR, that doesn't seem to be the case. So get ready for the pin. Here we go. That didn't take long at all. So there's the top cap. Then we've got the top spacer. Then we'll put the rag back there. Okay. We've got a top washer. Then we've got the main spring. We've got plenty of oil. Okay, so I'll just wipe this mess up and then we'll try and get the uh, seal out. Okay then, so now we have to remove the uh, rubber dust seal. Stick a screwdriver and carefully prise it out. There is the uh, dust seal. And if you look inside, there is like a little sealing ring. Sealing ring, yep. I can get this in the shot. Doesn't look like this one's seating quite properly, so Just put your screwdriver under it and pull it out. Then we can remove that. So now we've just got to uh, Use a bit of brute force to get the seal out. Hopefully we're in shot and you can see. All you have to do is use the uh, stanchion as like a sliding hammer and keep pulling it up. And that was pretty easy. Sometimes they could take ages. So there we are. Here is the uh, fork seal. Bong bong. There is the little uh, spacer underneath the fork seal. And these two are the bushes. And there is the uh, dampening rod. Okay, so if you look carefully at the bottom of the dampening rod, there is a little circlet around the bottom washer. So we'll have to remove that. Okay then, so let's try and remove this little circlet. Let's get a little spike under it or something. Try not to stab yourself in the finger. Because it bloody hurts. There we go, come on, keep going, all the way around, that's it, there's the little circlip, the D should pop off, there we have that collar and spring, then we have the other washer, and there is another circle clip on there. Let's see if that stops that going through. Yep, that stops that going through, so we'll have to remove that circle clip as well. Let's try to 
squeeze it off. into the other groove and we're going to get it out of that one. There we go. There we go, to the other circle it. Now this should be able to pass through the uh, tube and fall out the bottom. Do it up. There we go. There's the dampening rod and there's the spring. So there you go, that is how you take your fork leg to bits. So simple as that. Yes, hope you enjoyed it, hope it's been useful to you and uh, any questions or tips please leave a comment down below. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching my video. Look after yourself, stay well, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one. I see you in another light, brother.